architecture, as the name suggests, is just building for the community. Um, these are not specific sort of um, four-walled structures per se, but this could be in the way um, your facade is treated, in the way your entrances are treated, especially in your urban design, uh, your, your urban design, your design plate. Let's bring it up, Ayala. Do, do, do. How will you design the entrances, the facades, the uh, exits of your business uh, hotel? So in this class, do, 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 we'll talk about some theories, some practical um, advice on how to design this area here. So just sort of like an overview, community architecture means that your architecture fits within the community. Like it's part of this, like um, what do you call this group of buildings. It's not kanang it's not hampering or hindering the uh, movement of this district, uh, this like Ayala business district, and it's also improving the visual quality the uh, aesthetics as well as like other stuff like the environment uh, i say other stuff but the environment is very important so the building needs to not just like house 200 guest rooms but also uh, be sensitive to the local character the building heights the access the entrance and exits of the of the site and yeah that's when um, architecture, that's when you create community architecture, basically sensitive building design decisions that would positively impact your neighborhood or local community. Okay, now let's look at um, what are we going to be discussing in this class. So I bring up this book again. So for those who attended or like wanted the bonus points, basically the activity was read the first chapter of this book. So I'll just go through the table of contents over here. So this book talks about the different elements of like a public space or the different, the different kinds of public space and what makes up those different spaces. Because in design, we're not just, uh, in architectural design, we're not just making buildings, we're arranging spaces. And then for urban design, you're not anymore arranging spaces within an enclosed box, but the box becomes the public space, the street. So let me just sort of illustrate that because it's very hard to imagine what I'm talking about. Plus, it'll make for a good video, good content. And uh, I might just like edit it later because like it's we're in a different topic. So Photoshop open. So we are going to talk about urban design and people. Basically, it's we're designing for people and not for the sake of designing itself. Looking at basic design concepts, so elements of design, scale, proportion, just a review of that. Towns and buildings. How does like um, how do towns? Uh, how are towns created? How do buildings affect towns? How does the people in that town sort of uh, affect? the design of the buildings and the public space and this all this has everything to do with the behavior and the culture of the people living in that town and then so what are the different kinds of public space according to moten uh, the author of this book i'll just make a new one here let's say 200 pixels or like 120 is fine let's make it 1000 by 1000 not so small So probably in the first week we'll be like next week we'll be talking about this and by the midterms I guess one two three four five we'll be talking about we'll be finishing up squares or plazas and streets probably the most common forms uh, in the Philippines and then we'll also talk about seafront rivers and canals and then uh, sustainability which we have talked about at length uh, in the previous semester. Uh, visual analysis, we didn't get to talk about this last year, so I, I hope I can like have enough time to discuss that. And then case studies in urban design. 
So it's not such a long book. It's only like uh, less than 300 pages. So kaya ra kayo. If we don't have any like uh, more emergencies or like brownouts or whatever. And then together with these lectures, we'll bring in the community architecture. So over here, sort of just to like uh, refresh you guys. So how do we apply this in design? The, the, the. So this is your hotel site, your business hotel site. Uh, I don't know why it's like being like that. I need turn off pressure sensitivity. Yeah. So this is your whoa site in the design class. This is I forgot what name of the street this is. Can someone name this street? You can't like uh, remember. <laughs> and then Ayala's over here. And then you have the other like uh, commercial buildings over here. buildings hello um let's see here uh anyone can name the street over here anyway i'll just like look it up do 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 i was gonna offer like plus points for it but never mind <laughs> seems like anyone could just do that uh let's see bohol avenue and archbishop reyes okay Let's go blue. So Bohol Avenue and Archbishop uh, Reyes. Okay. So in architecture, we design uh, buildings. So we have a building that's, let's say, a wall, a roof, and another wall, and you put your entrance over there. So this is a building. <laughs> and I, I was like, just funny to me that I'm going to write building. Then in public space, I'll just call this public space. We're designing um, streets, plazas, and seafronts. Seafronts. So it's still a three-dimensional space. Most people, especially the layman's, the normal people, wouldn't think of public space as a three-dimensional object. But in fact, it is. So what, uh, what are streets? Streets are not just the sidewalk. Streets are the sidewalk and the road. So this is a section. And what are the walls of the street? The walls of the street are your building facades. Like you have entrances here, that's one building. Another building over there, another building over there. So what you're designing is, let's see, another color. Um, let's say pink. What you're designing is the, the width of the road, R-O-A-D, the width of the sidewalks, W-S, W-S, the building heights, you can't dictate building heights, but you need to take them into consideration. BHL, BHL, and basically the roof of your public space is the sky. So think about public space as a three-dimensional room, a, basically an enclosed space. That's why we talked about enclosure in, a, in last Sam's design. And the more defined or the more, uh, what they call this, clear the enclosure is, the better technically is your public space. And how do you make that better? Uh, how do you create good public space design? That's the purpose of this book over here. So we're going to be looking at the differences of like squares and, squares and streets and seafronts. So that's sort of a quick overview. Uh, streets are these, uh, and then plazas are large open spaces. Uh, not really large, like the, the plazas could be as small as 50 by 50, 50 meters by 50 meters. But it's a space where people can come together 
and the three like the um, enclosure of it the enclosure of a plaza let's say um, plaza independencia for example you have the um, fort san pedro on one end and then you have the really big this is where philippine sort of plazas like break down there are no, there's no enclosure in Philippine plazas, especially Cebu City. So you have the um, Fort San Pedro over here, like the triangular fort, uh, San Pedro. And then basically the walls of the plaza are the, are the roads around it. So if you go to Plaza Independencia over here, Let's see, Plaza Independencia. There is really no sense of enclosure because the only thing that's defining the space are the streets. And then another thing is that these streets have very high like traffic speeds. So the plaza is not functioning properly because it's very hard to get to because you have to cross these like four lanes of road four lanes of road and then there's no one living nearby everything is like an institutional building where people work ah headache sorry someone is cutting grass next door and they're jesus it's literally, literally just outside Oh my gosh, it's so loud. Hang on. I think I need to stop recording here. Uh, wait, I think I can power through. So yeah, that's why when you go here, it feels very lackluster. There's no impact. Whoops. And it's not very memorable. Like you're here in the plaza and you go there and like, yeah, it's a it's a park. There's like, it's not me. There's You don't feel anything when you're here, Bitao. So that's another thing. Uh, come on. Oh, geez. Even the map is like freezing. Good design, uh, not just architecture, but design in general, should leave an impact on the person who visits or the person who like experiences it or like visits that place. So if you look at this section of like Plaza Independencia, wala, park lang. There's nothing going on. There's nobody here because there's nothing to do. At least there are people sitting in the in the shade of the trees. That's one function of the trees. But in general, this space is like very empty, not lively at all. So that's what we're trying to do in this class, like trying to create good spaces with that will be visited and that will be impactful to everyone. Sorry, it's like can everyone hear that, <laughs> or is it just me? Okay, the mic is not picking it up. So thank. Uh, hopefully, the video recording will be fine. So yeah, so one big component of making good public space is really enclosure. So you need to define what are the walls, quote unquote, of your public space. And like we'll discuss more on that uh, in this course. And then a seafront is basically just a street or plaza near a body of water. So those are the two types of public space according to uh, Moten, Moten discussion. They are three, two, three, three. So at the end of this course, the goal really is to gain is to well PDF file save as. Uh, why is it set to PDF? Sorry. Moten, Moten, A R three, two, three, three. So the objective of this class. Objective. to define so understand so before you de define something you need to understand it define urban design so what makes good public space what makes good uh, public space design And then if you learn how to do that, if you learn what makes good public space, you basically learn what community architecture is. 
because our community architecture, architecture. Ah, sabah, ah, gabi, ah, magbabuang. Community architecture is designing for the public. So, oh, finally, he stopped cutting grass. Why don't you just give him a pair of scissors, Jesus? Anyway, so we go back to our design problem here. So for it to become a good piece of architecture and a good piece of like public design, it needs to be usable by the public. Balik balik lang kusulti public ani. So we have Bohol Street here. We have Archbishop Reyes here. What makes it good is that if you have a public space in front of your um, hotel or like close to your hotel, it needs to be enclosed. So let's say uh, the, earlier we discussed that the maximum building footprint is almost like 4,000 square meters, but you need some um, open space. And then we came up with like 2,000 square meters. So the whole site is 5,000. So let's say your building is somewhere around here. Uh, let me change it to green. Somewhere around here. How do you make it a good building? By promoting enclosure, as we discussed uh, last semester. So, then, so how do you do enclosure? Simple, Rakaya. You just have to align your building heights, your building mass, to the neighboring building. So you have a existing building over here. So you just continue the height. You have Ayala building here, which is a bit shorter. So we need to address that. How do you make Ayala building fit? Uh, this is Metro Mall, I think, fit into your design. And then you also have the open space. Uh, let's say we have green, uh, pink, uh, I think this color. Oh, blue. Let's just call it blue. So you have public space here. You have like an entrance or whatever. It can also be an exterior park. It must also be enclosed properly. So if you have a public space that's enclosed properly, you will have a building that's enclosed properly and these separate enclosures will come together to create an enclosed street uh, let's say i'm running out of colors uh, orange so this becomes the wall of this street okay. this becomes the wall of the three-dimensional like street over here so kanasha ayala will also make another wall like here and then the the street the sidewalks the road becomes like the 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 ground of that uh, three dimensional space and the the building heights the canopies the uh, what they call this the roofs the eaves becomes like sort of the sky of this space over here and you need to create this is public space you need to create this enclosure one side here in Bohol Avenue another one over here. Uh, I forgot what this street is called. In front of it here. Uh, let me just go back to the map. Uh, Ayala. Ayala, Center Cebu. Let's see here. This is Luzon Avenue. You need to create another enclosure at Luzon Avenue. Luzon. And another enclosure at Archbishop Reyes. So this is what urban design is about. So you have the building, which is an enclosure all on its own. Building. And then you're going to design also, or like not really completely design it, but be aware of the public space around it. So that's this sort of chunk here. The chunk around your building. So let's say that's your lot. Ana, something like that. So this is the combination of um, B, Bohol Street, Bohol Street, Archbishop Reyes, Arch Reyes, and Luzon Avenue. And then your building could be a bit higher than that, or you can even like think about how the building fits as a whole. Like if you all the way up to the topmost part of your building, how does it fit into this context? So your building is over here. 
And then you have your the open space part of your building. It's not 50%, but I'm just exaggerating it so you can see. Okay. Anasha. This is your uh, TOSL, and this is your building envelope. Okay. So that's basically um, design, urban design. <laughs> How urban design relates with architecture. So you're not just thinking about this thing, the green, but you're also thinking about the space around it, the orange, the public space. And that should like uh, give you a quick introduction as to what we're trying to do in this class. I'll share with you the book. Um, I'll put it up here on our Facebook page. It's like easier, easy access. AR2233. I'll stop recording. Stop recording. Stop presenting.